Okay, um, so welcome to those of you just joining us and welcome back to, to those of you who've been in sessions with us this afternoon. Welcome to the Big Hack. This afternoon in the UK, we have looked at climate solutions within the following themes. City is an investable asset class. They split themselves amongst energy, real estate and smart mobility and I believe had some really interesting discussions. The Climate Commons Group had a lively discussion about how to create the legal building blocks to enable companies to share specified IP as part of their ESG commitment in a way that sufficiently protects their commercial interests, yet fosters greater innovation and collaboration in developing climate solutions. The energy session had 29 participants all contributing to the raw idea and origin story development, and they went on to form three sub teams to develop origin stories into some ambitious clauses. We're all, they're also hoping that more people will join in the following session, so check out their Slack channel if you want to get involved. Net Zero Employment Culture worked on two origin stories, Matilda's policy on reducing emissions from business travel and Scarlett's condition on share incentive schemes and remuner remuneration linked to non-financial targets. They were blown away by how great the process was for stimulating ideas. Real estate will collaborate amongst a few firms to take forward an origin story on circular economy obligations and maintenance and rehab clauses in commercial leases, and they enjoyed brainstorming with an architect. Debt finance and climate change, I believe, had a very productive session, and I think they had some LMA lawyers in there with them, which hopefully would have been very interesting. Smart mobility and infrastructure had a fascinating discussion about data sharing in relation to transport and city design, but is looking for contributions to the origin story, Suki's Clause, which is shared on their channel. Using model clauses had 12 people, and the highlight was getting some insightful feedback and a bunch of ideas how TCLP can help usage of clauses. The best idea was to draft the advantages of each clause to help internal cells. Two firms also hosted internal sessions on using model clauses. And um, we're not exactly sure what happened in using model clauses in Ireland, but I think it was a great success. And I know that they had a lot of participants. And so we have an Irish expansion underway, which I'm hoping there will also be an American expansion underway after the sessions that you're just about to have. Now we're passing the baton from EMEA to the Americas. So first of all, I would like to introduce Diane Harris, who is a partner at MDY Legal and currently acting for the Private Infrastructure and Development Group. Diane, I would like to ask you three things. First of all, please could you set the scene by placing TCLP into the context of your legal sector? Then could you briefly describe your involvement with TCLP so far and why it's important? And then could you choose one idea or origin story that's come out of the hack so far and say a few words about its potential impact? Over to you, Diane. Thank you, I'd be like, delighted to. Um, so I'm sorry for those of you who will have heard what I'm going to say um, many times before. Um, as uh, Jenny said, I'm Diane Harris. I'm currently seconded to the Private Infrastructure Development Group, which is an organisation that was set up in 2002 by the governments of the UK, um, Sweden, Switzerland and the Netherlands, and which since then has been joined by Australia, Norway, uh, Germany and the International Finance Corporation on behalf of the World Bank Group. We um, invest in one way or another in private sector infrastructure projects um, in um, sub-Saharan Africa, South and Southeast Asia and um, the Pacific, i.e. those countries that are least resilient uh, to climate change and have also been um, to date the, the lowest emitters as well. Um, we have, at the Private Infrastructure Development Group or, or PIDGE, we have um, over the, well, since 2007, we've had um, a climate change approach. We've looked at climate when making investment decisions. Since the Paris Agreement, um, we've further aligned our investment policy. Um, we've, um, there's a, been a flat out prohibition on coal for um, a, a number of years now. Um, limited, we have limited um, heavy fuel oil. We can only invest in limited circumstances in heavy fuel oil projects. Um, we can only invest in limited circumstances, depending on the country's needs um, in gas um, fired power stations. So we have a Paris aligned investment policy, we have a Paris aligned portfolio, we've graded it red, amber, green um, in relation to the Paris agreement, we have a climate standard, 
what when I first met Matt um, back in February this year, <laughs> what I realized was that we hadn't fully used our, our leverage. We have $3 billion from these governments, which is, is taxpayers money. Um, and uh, it's supposed to be used in, in the best way possible and to achieve every um, goal that we could possibly achieve. So uh, on first meeting Matt, I realized and, and hearing about TCLP, I realized that we hadn't um, thought about what we could use uh, our finance agreements for. Um, yes, we insist that our money can only be used in certain investments, but what behavior could we encourage taking into account um, the potential limitations of the markets in which we operate? You know, what's appropriate and equitable in the markets in which we operate, given that to date um, they're bearing the consequences of, of high emitting countries rather than um, their own actions. But, but what could we include in our contracts? So um, I've over the past um, eight months, nine months, um, I have taken climate contract play one climate contract playbook two and consolidated the clauses that I thought we could potentially use in our finance agreements into what is Callum and Theo's clause in climate um, contract uh, playbook um, three and uh, we're in the process of rolling that out it's a first draft very much a first draft rolling that out with our project investment officers and um, with our uh, clients so I'm very much looking forward to this hackathon, very much looking to forward to seeing what will come out of the different regions. I see the climate clauses as universal, um, you know, whilst they'll be tethered in, in whichever national um, uh, law is applicable, I, I think they'll all have, uni you know, potential universal use. And as I said, what I've done so far in Callum and Theo's um, clause, I see is very much a first draft. Looking forward to seeing what ideas come out of this hackathon um, from across the globe. Um, and, you know, very interested in hearing um, about the using model clauses session today. Um, and that, you know, for example, some of the feedback has been one of the great things we, that would be um, good to include with each model clause or model law is what is the impact? Why would we use this? What is the environmental impact? Environmental impact? What is the advantage for, for using that? So that would be something that I know Becky is thinking about already and that would be great to, to take forward. Um, further need for examples and feedback on how we roll this out and you know that's that's partly you know for purely selfish reasons I'm involved with TCLP because it's just making my life so much easier to have so many people thinking about this and sharing ideas and sharing feedback um, and uh, I think I'll have I covered everything Jenny yeah, so, um, so on that note, I will um, stop there and hand over to Kathy Difficlia um, from um, uh, Vice President, US Practical Law Editorial. And I have three questions um, for you, Kathy, if you don't mind. So one is, um, if, well, could you place um, TCLP and the hackathon into the context, uh, context of the legal sector in, in the Americas? Um, and um, consolidating two and three. Um, explain what is important about TCLP and, and the hackathon in the Americas and um, what you hope um, to come out of this. So over to you, Kathy. Great. Thank you, Diane. Um, I am delighted to pick up the baton um, and uh, uh, have our teams in the Americas become a part of the Chance for Women project. Um, the project is, is so important. Um, obviously, where climate change uh, is right now um, and how imperative it is to act now, using our skills and our expertise um, in the legal marketplace is um, just really uh, influential and it's an opportunity for us to really move things forward. So I'm super excited um, to, to pick things up and have um, this come to the Americas. Um, and I think our involvement with the Chancery Lane project really starts um, with Becky Klisman. So I just wanted to um, give a shout out to her. Um, her. It's her passion and her enthusiasm for the cause uh, that really brought the opportunity to partner um, to Practical Law, to Thomson Reuters. And um, I think things have really taken off from there. So it's really great to see your um, vision come to fruition here, Becky. So thank you for all of your efforts. Um, I think you know we have a unique opportunity um, at, at, at Thomson Reuters and Practical Law to be uh, a part of this. And it really comes from the things that, that we do as a business and the type of company that we want to be. 
um, and combining that with the, the legal expertise and the skill set that we have here, it's just a natural partnership. So um, I think, you know, becoming a, a part of the drafting process um, was a natural fit um, for us and a way for us to combine that uh, good corporate citizenship that we want at, at Thomson Reuters with our subject matter expertise to provide really powerful content um, that could help move things forward in a meaningful way for in the legal um, market. And so I think it's kind of um, a natural progression to come to the United States. Obviously, it's a significant commercial market. It is, uh, you know, a lot of transactions take place here. It's an international uh, financial hub. It's also a very large legal market. Um, so it represents a significant opportunity um, to make um, change. Um, I think also it's important to think about the um, impact that we can have in the US. One of the things that um, we've been talking about recently is how there is, um, shall we say, a, uh, a lack of um, federal mandate on the part of the government. Um, so there's a, an opportunity there to act. And so a lot of states have taken up that mantle and, and are, are participating in impassion initiatives on their own. Um, but that leads to sort of inconsistent regulatory landscapes. And so if one size yeah. doesn't fit all, um, then the Chancery Lane Project yeah. clauses. Sorry. Video is off. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Can people hear me? Yes. Um, so I was just saying that, that the, the opportunity to take the Chancery Lane Project model clauses um, and have them be sort of translated to the extent they're not universal um, to the US really presents us with an opportunity um, to, to act outside of government um, and drive this forward in a way that can be you know, incredibly um, powerful and create a pathway to change where, where there is inaction. Um, and so I think you know, for, for me um, and for practical law and for Thomson Reuters, I hope that the Head Start um, that the UK model clauses can provide will enable the US teams to really hit the ground running. And um, I know that Brandon um, and Roger Horner and Brandon Moss and Francis Fagenblatt who are um, chairing sessions this afternoon, they'll be able to facilitate those um, that much easier with the, the precedents as well as be sort of unfettered in their thinking about what else, what sort of new things can we do. Um, so it's my hope that those sessions will be fruitful um, and that it'll be the start of building a community um, of lawyers um, across multiple practice areas uh, who want to incorporate climate change into their transactions. Um, and so over time, hopefully we'll be able to move the dial in the US um, to a have climate sort of conscious drafting become the norm here um, in the way that um, I jealously listen to all of you about uh, the way it is uh, in other jurisdictions. Um, so I'm really, really excited uh, for today's work. Thank you both Diane and Kathy for those great insights uh, and you know, the view from both sides of the pond there. Now I'm going to share my screen and talk you through how the big hack works. So bear with me a second. Okay, so the Big Hack 2020 is the Chancery Lane Project's first global event. Passing around the world in 25 hours, we're moving from EMEA now to the Americas, then to Asia Pacific and back round to EMEA again, where we'll meet for the closing plenary from 12 to 1 p.m. GMT tomorrow. Let's have a look at the schedule for this afternoon in the Americas. First up, we have the cooler plate or climate aligned boilerplate clauses. And then we have using model clauses in America, including dispute resolution. Each of these sessions will start with an introductory half hour from the Chancery Lane project right here in our Zoom room at 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. respectively. Then at 1.30 or 2.30, you will join the relevant vi video conference rooms for your chosen theme which we will post the details of in the chat and on Slack. 
Then at 5.30 to 6 p.m. you can help us hand over to Asia Pacific where we'll hear a summary of events so far and be joined by Ilmi Granoff, Director of Sustainable Finance at Climate Works, who will pass the virtual baton to Sarah Park Barker, Global Head of Climate Risk Governance at Minter Ellison. Finally, if you're still awake, please join us for the closing ceremony. TCRP staff and volunteers will be here in our Zoom room throughout. We're here to support you. Drop, drop in if you get lost and we'll point you in the right direction. We're also here if you'd just like to chat over a virtual cup of tea and a biscuit. I hope you enjoy the Big Hack 2020. If you're joining a content creation theme this afternoon, please do stick around as the introductory session will begin here shortly. Now I'm going to play you the Legal Solutions to Climate Problems video featuring Ellie. Thanks for joining the Chancery Lane Project's Big Hack 2020. I'm Ellie and I'm here today to introduce you to some major climate concepts that will help you hack out legal solutions. So, you've picked a theme from one of our 18 challenges running across the different time zones. But you might be thinking, I'm not a climate or environmental expert. How do I know what the problem is and what climate solution we need to bring about? And what tools can I use for robust climate drafting? Well, here are some questions for when you're brainstorming with your groups. First, what is the real world climate problem? Does the activity or sector have high emissions? Is it particularly vulnerable to climate hazards and this damage or disruption will affect economies and communities? By way of example, both of these challenges apply to the infrastructure sector. So people working on that theme will need to make sure that they're rewiring contracts to tackle both these issues. Next, what is the legal angle to the climate problem? Now this is where your legal expertise comes in. Do contractual terms currently incentivise parties to continue emitting? Are they silent on climate when they could help unlock the solutions? Third, you need to ask, what is the legal solution to that problem? Do you need to draft a new term or amend an existing contractual norm to remove a barrier? or incentivize a solution? Is it a nudge to put climate on the table or a hard obligation to help bring about a specific climate solution like reduced emissions? This is the creative bit. Now, lastly, you need to ask, how will my legal solution help solve the real world problem? So, what would be the real world climate outcomes if this clause is used in a specific contract and in aggregate if it becomes a contractual norm? Will it unlock finance for zero or low emissions energy or infrastructure? Will it lead to climate resilient development? You don't need to develop a methodology to test this but you should be able to describe the pathway from your legal solution to a potential positive climate outcome. So what will help with these steps? We have a 15 minute video on our website on the building blocks for drafting climate solutions. This covers the Paris Agreement warming limits a net zero emission goal it points you to the systems transitions solutions set out in the IPCC's 2018 special report on 1.5 degrees. And it gives you some tools to use in your drafting, carbon budgets, science-based emissions reduction targets, and the TCFD framework for climate risk management and disclosure. 
these are some starting points for drafting robust legal solutions to tackle climate change. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the big hack. Okay, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly did. It was great every time. So everyone, if you have any problems, do come back to this main Zoom room throughout the time that the hack is running. And I want to say thank you to our facilitators who've put in such an incredible amount of work training and preparing their sessions. Without him, we wouldn't have been able to run such an amazing range of themes in all the different regions. I hope you all really enjoy the hack and please join us back in here again for the the handover later.